Okay, here is the project. So here's the CNC. So basically moved into this garage about six months ago. Uh, CNC was the first thing that got set up. That's just an old table I had. This got set up. I started using it, you know, a week after we moved in. Not really set up the way I want it, but it's just been, you know, functional for me as of right now. So this is my current situation with all my clamps, key nuts, bits. You know, these are the bits I use on a daily basis. These are the spares. More bits, more bits, more bits. Uh, more bits. Uh, you know, this laptop screen is obviously broken. So we've got TV that I had. So this is the this is the situation. So it's got to be a little organized. So my plan was to build some drawers uh, and make this table. It's uh, three and a half by seven and a half, or three and a half by eight feet. Uh, put that on wheels and put some cabinets and drawers under there. That might happen, but for right now, my goal is to use some of these sliders that I had left over. And I am gonna make a tray or a drawer. If it's underneath there, pops out, holds all my crap. A little more organization. Uh, I can reclaim the top of this for work area if I need it, or just a pile more crap, which is probably what's gonna happen. So let's take a look at what we need to do. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna bring some tools over that you think you're gonna to wanna to use on your tray. It could be anything, you don't necessarily have to use them, but it's better just to do them all at the same time, that way you have them. They don't have to be in any particular order. Once we've traced them and they're vectors, you can move them all around. You know, I only have, I only, I've got two routers. I'm only obviously gonna use one of these, but I'll probably put them both in there. That way I know where they are. And when I switch routers, not a big deal. Like I said, you don't have to use it, but if you've got the picture, you might as well. It's easier if you take the picture on a white background rather than this being like a dark background, make it a lot easier to trace. So I'm gonna go grab my phone and I'm gonna take a picture directly over top of the objects. That way you've got a direct line of sight. If you take it off to the side, it's gonna kind of skew your, uh, your tracing abilities. The ruler is here for scale in case I need it. I probably won't use it. What I'll do is I will trace the vectors and then I'll come back and actually uh, just verify the dimensions and the sizes and I'll go from there. So I'll go grab my phone. We will uh, take a picture. I'll bring it in the carve coat and we'll go from there. Okay, here we are in Maker. So what I'm gonna do is actually bring this photo in. So here's our photo. Uh, for whatever reason, it brings it in at this crazy size. Obviously, we're not going to do that. This is inches, so I'm just going to pick something easy. I'm going to go 20 inches. Uh, I'm going to bring this in as an example. This is the first photo I took. And I wasn't really crazy about uh, the image itself. Um, I just wasn't crazy about the way the caliper looked, the way the wrench looked. So what I decided to do was break it up into two photos. I'll do three tools in each photo. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like right now. Now the wrenches should be straightforward. We're gonna do the caliper because this is the most complicated. Um, so what we will do to begin with is we're just actually gonna place some nodes around our shape. And again, this is gonna fit into the MDF that I'm going to use. It's not going to be like a super snug fit. I'm going to trace it and then I'm actually going to apply an offset to give the tool a little bit of room and then we'll put some finger holes so you can pick the tool up. So don't worry about being like super precise because you do need a little bit of room to get the tool in and out. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm just going to go over to my line tool 
and I'm just going to start picking some points. I mean, I could do this little knob. I'm probably just going to go straight over. I'll do this curve. But, you know, going into that detail, you can if you want, but I don't really feel the need. Again, here, there's a radius around this piece. Um, you know, feel free to do whatever you feel is necessary, but... You could just do a generic shape as well. It doesn't have to be anything too precise. So there's a vector around our caliper. So for these straight lines, you can see that, obviously we can see the side of the caliper. So this isn't really exact. What my plan is when I cut these into the MDF, I will cut each shape out. I'll have my offset and I will test it in the machine after the cut. That way I can come back right away if I have to and make any tweaks while the machine is there, while the bit's in the machine. Uh, if I need to just radius something, I can do that quickly because by the time we're done, it'll just be doing an outline profile cut. So it'll be pretty simple. So let's just go in here to a node editor and we can just kind of move these nodes around. Obviously, if this isn't too precise, uh, that comes in here, jets out there. Again, I'm not going to be really picky about this because uh, we're going to have to have some gaps around this. So, you know, make it look nice, but it has to be functional more than anything. And you can even put your own offset in here rather than using the offset tool. You can try that. I'm going to hit B. I'm going to put a little radius on this just because. So really, when you break it down into these uh, basic shapes, it becomes pretty easy and it doesn't really have to be overwhelming. Uh, you're just making simple lines and shapes. So tracing an image like this uh, well, some people see that and think, oh no, I can't do that. It's actually quite easy. So you know what? I'm happy with that. We'll use that for our uh, test. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put some fingertip holes so you can actually reach down and grab this tool. Now basically all you need to do is pick a circle. Whatever size your fingers are, whatever you feel is appropriate. Um, I'm going to do two. I'm just going to copy and paste it. It's my arrow key, bring it down. Just use my scissor tool here. Delete the parts I do not want. And that's it. So there we've got our caliper. We've got a couple little spots to grab our tool. Um, best thing to do right now would be to test that. 
Um, well, next thing we actually do is this needs to be sized at some point in time. Um, but I'll do that. I'm going to do this here. I'll uh, just to make it a little bit quicker. I'm going to go back once I have all my vectors size. I'll go back. I'll measure each one. I'll measure from the end of the caliper to the other end, and I'll make sure that my vectors meet uh, the size of the actual tool. Same for the wrench. Let me do the wrench real quick. Um, I will do the exact same thing for each wrench, mainly just from end to end. Again, when we put it into the machine and cut it, we'll do a test, and if it doesn't work, uh, we can always change our cut path on the machine. It makes it a lot easier. So I'm going to go ahead and trace the other tools. I'll have those done, and then we'll uh, we'll make the bit tray. Okay, so here are my outlines, and basically what I'm going to do now is I am going to uh, I'm going to size each one. I've got them all here in front of me. I'm just going to simply lay them down on a ruler. I'm going to pick two reference points. Uh, for example, the caliper. I'm going to pick uh, the top right down to the bottom. I'm going to measure it, and I'm going to just transform this and make sure it's the same size. And I think what I will do, instead of putting an offset around these, I kind of put a small offset as I was tracing them. I, I'll use that as a start point, and then I'll go from there. Okay, so we've got our tools traced. I've got them scaled appropriately. Uh, let's bring them in and start making our tray. Let's bring the vectors in. There they are. So let's start bringing them in and moving them around. Okay, there are my tools. Now, the next thing that I want to uh, make a spot for, I figured, was my clamps. My clamps are homemade. It's just half inch pieces of plywood. Uh, I've got two different sizes. Some are five inches, and the others are three and a half. I've got six of each, so I figured I'd make a little slot for them to stand them up on their sides. That way they'll take up less space, but they'll still be easy to grab. And for these, I've got two different systems to hold these down on my wasteboard. I've got a T-track, and then I've got T-nuts that come up from the bottom. So I've got a regular bolt, and then I've got the T-nut, T-track bolt. So rather than make cert, like a whole bunch of little holes to stand each bolt up and all that in the washers, I'm not going to do that because I'll never put them back. So what I thought I'd do is just make a little dish right here in the bottom. That way I can have all my uh, nuts, washers, bolts, all in this little tray. And they're easy to access. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, next thing I have is the smaller clamps. Okay. So the next thing I have is my bits. So there's two ways to approach the bit storage. Some people will make squares in their tray uh, to hold the cases for each bit. Now I've got so many different bits that I've got so many different size cases. Uh, it's just not a reasonable expectation. Because you know, if I make one size and I'll have too many that won't fit. So what I do have is I use quarter inch bits and I use eighth inch bits. So I'm gonna put just holes in to hold the bits up. And you can imagine that you can put a lot of little holes in this little area. I'm not gonna fill the whole back of this tray up with, with, with circles. Uh, I'm not gonna label these bits some people will put v bit you know up cut down cut o flute whatever you want to do i'm not going to do that i've been doing this long enough i know what the bits are and i know when a bit is dull i don't typically keep a bit if it's past its life if it's dull it goes in the garbage can so the only bits that will be up here will be bits that are sharp and usable and for the common bits that i use most often i'll probably have a spare up in this area but what I plan on doing in the back is making some more of these little trays these little dishes for bit store so I'll have my extra bits in their cases in this little area that way when I need one they're there they're still in the cases the labels are still on them they're still easily accessible and they're also labeled so let's start with the quarter inch bit now I'm gonna make these holes slightly bigger just because if you try to cut a quarter inch hole with a quarter inch bit, sometimes depending on how the bit is entered in your software, uh, the machine won't let you do it. So I'm just going to go slightly over anyway, just to make just to make the bit a little bit easier to get in and out. Because the hole is just there to hold the bit up straight. It doesn't have to be a super snug fit. So I'm going to go back to the block rotate copy tool and I am going to make five hundred let's do ten okay bring that down and see what that looks like okay so that's room right there for 50 quarter inch bits now that is probably more bits than I'll ever put up there um, you know I might be surprised actually I could probably put 20 in there without even looking but it seems excessive to me but I'll leave it uh, you know doesn't hurt to have too much so next will be the eighth inch I forgot to do one thing. One thing I thought of is I want a place to put my collets. I've got two different routers. Oh, I've got two different routers um, with you know three or four different collets for each router. So I think what I'll do is I will make a little dish right here for the collets. <laughs> There, so there's room for a hundred bits. Got room for my collets, all my clamps, my tools, and then uh, nuts and some miscellaneous in this bigger tray. So what I think I'll do in the back is I'll actually make room for more storage, like I said. So the bits and stuff that I do have, I can put in these trays. So I'm gonna make two. I think what I'm going to do for this area here, I think I'll leave that for now. Um, you never know when you're going to get something new, something different. If I need room for more storage, I could always slap it back on the machine, make another bowl. If I get another tool or something that I think I want to have here, I can do that at any, any time. This will be going in a drawer that I'm going to make. so. I think it just makes sense to leave it. It can be removed anytime and I can make whatever additional changes I want to. 
to this to this spot. I can even you know tape a chart on here if you want to tape a chart of your feet and speeds, or you want to tape a chart of your thicknesses or conversion chart from millimeters to inches. Uh, that would be a good place. Or you know what, just store paper, pad stuff. So let's leave that blank for now. Okay, so we have our design. Uh, now we need to cut it. So let's go ahead and apply some tool pass. This will be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're gonna use two bits. We're gonna use a quarter inch bit and an eighth inch bit because we have to. Uh, we're gonna need eighth inch for the small holes, obviously, quarter inch for the large. So first I'll put them into groups just to make it a little bit easier. So what I'll probably do is I'll use the eighth inch because the eighth inch is gonna have to come in here and kind of just take away this radius. This might not be big enough uh, with our eighth inch bit in there. And we're obviously going to have to use the eighth inch for the eighth inch holes. And we'll use, hopefully, for these clamp holders that I've allowed enough tolerance for this radius. Because basically, what this pocket is going to look like is it's going to have. It's going to have a radius around here of an eighth inch. So hopefully that's enough to hold these clamps. If not, I'll probably go in there with a chisel and just make them straight, square them off. Or I'll go in and just do a little dog bone like that, which is possible. I could do that right now. Uh, I just don't want to. Let me try this first. So here we go. Let's do the tools first. We will do, first we'll set up my material. I'm using uh, 5 8 MDF, so 0.65 of an inch. And we'll set these up. We are just going to use the area clearance toolpath. We are going to go down now. Here's the other thing we should talk about depth. So I know that these two wrenches are only an eighth of an inch deep. So there's not much of a point in me going deeper than an eighth of an inch for these two because you know unless you want them in there that far that's up to you so what i'm going to do is actually i will do these the, these two wrenches i'll do them at an eighth of an inch and the rest of the tools i will do a little bit deeper probably a quarter of an inch for the holes and the pockets and holders i'll probably go down 0.3 basically you don't need to go down really far the whole idea of the holders for the bits is just to hold the bit upright so a quarter of an inch 0.3 is probably fine you can go deeper if you'd like uh, I think maybe for the pockets I'll go down a little bit deeper again it's all arbitrary there's no set rule this is your organizer do what you want you can always cut them shallow and then go back and make them deeper right you've got that option so let's go ahead and do these so do this and we are just going to go down 0.125 and I think with these two I can get away with just using a quarter inch bit so I've got my settings for my bits pretty conservative I've entered them in there, you know, five years ago. Uh, I haven't changed them since. I just upgrade them or update them as I'm cutting. Depending on what I'm cutting, I'll change my feeds and speeds. 40 inches a minute in MDF is pretty slow. I'm gonna bump it up to 60 to start off with. And I'm using Carbide Motion to send my G-code. So the nice thing about that is I can increase my speed 200%. So I can speed that up to 120 inches a minute, which is probably what I'll do, but I don't want to start at 120 inches a minute. I'd rather start at a slower speed, let it do a couple passes, and then increase it. Because that first pass on a clearing path is full contact of your bit. So if you're using a quarter inch bit, that first pass is full contact, meaning you're clearing a quarter inch of a time. Now you can see my step over is half the radius of the bit. So on the next pass, it's only 50% of the bit. So I can I can increase the speed to 200% and not worry about it. If you go right up to your maximum speed at your first pass, 
that's when things happen, bits break, you lose a step, stuff like that. So let's do that. I'll just call this one wrenches. And there we go. Easy. Now these other ones, I'm going to increase. my depth of cut. So just start off at a quarter inch. I'm going to add an eighth inch. Because I need that eighth inch for around this square part in the caliper, probably around the knife here a couple places. Uh, let's just see. Yep. Yeah, you can see in the knife right there, and I know on the caliper here as well. So that might not be enough for the little knob on the caliper, but again, we can come back and change it. Okay, so there's our tools. Let's do the uh, let's do the holders here. What are they called? So we click on the same thing, we're using the same tools, we're just going to change our depth. I'm going to go 0.25 and everything's the same. Make sure you call it a different name. So if you select this, let's go back and try this again. So if I, if I go back and select a toolpath I've already made, you can see it now selects these. I want to use the exact same tools, exact same settings, but a different set of vectors. So as long as you change this name, it will create another toolpath with the same settings. If you don't change this name, then it's just gonna apply these settings to a different set of vectors. So I wanna go 0.35. I will select my new vectors and we'll change the name. And you can see that it actually applied the same tool pass to this. Actually, I'm going to remove this just because. So there we go. So that's quarter inch bit doing all that work. Okay, so let's do our eighth inch holes. There's a couple ways you could do this. If this was a piece of hardwood, I would probably get into the drilling and do some peck drilling, but uh, it's MDF, it's gonna cut like powder. So I'm pretty comfortable just using the area clearance tool. So we're gonna do depth of cut. We will do quarter in. Nah, let's do point three. I'll add my bit. Now the feed rate's not really gonna matter, but plunge rate will. I'm gonna go 40. It could go faster, but let's do our quarter tools. Area clearance, we will pick our quarter inch bit. Same thing, 0.3. Change this. This can speed up a little bit more. This we will call large holes. So what we will do now, oh, we forgot one more. We need to cut this out. So let's do this, we'll do profile cut. See, it's a good thing I did that. So obviously I have my position set wrong. I go back and forth between the things I design. I go center of my model for my position or I go bottom left. And I, in the back of my head, always assume bottom left, but obviously this model was set at center. So if I would have went and ran this, we would have had issues. 
So I'll go ahead and fix this instead of letting you watch it all and we will go cut this out. One last thing to go over before we continue is saving the tool pass over. So because we've only used two different size bits, we can now group those tools together to run on one tool path rather than send these eight tool paths we've saved, rather than send them individually, we'll save them in two tool paths so let's start with the eighth inch and you can see here in carveco it actually breaks them down for you and tells you what tool you're using so it makes it kind of simple to do the only thing you might want to take into account is the order of operation that it's going to cut normally when you're doing an area clearance you would use the bigger bit to clear to clear the majority of the area and you go back with a smaller bit to clean up the small little places that you can't get to but this is MDF it's pretty soft uh, I know that the eighth inch bit can handle what's going to do so I'm just going to do the eighth inch first to speed things up because I want to add the cut at the very end of the file in with the with the quarter inch cut path that way I'm only sending two two files I'm only sending two G code files do the eighth inch and the quarter inch and that's it you could break it down you could do the quarter inch first then do the eighth inch then put the quarter back quarter inch back in to finish the cut but i'm just going to do this just to speed things up so i'm just going to call this tray small so now when i do it i want to make sure that this cut path is my last path because carve call will go down the list that you save over and do them in the order that you have them saved. So let's just go over and doesn't matter what order. Just want to make sure that this cut path is the last path. So this is the order that things will cut in. And we'll save this as large. So now when I go over to my machine, I'm only sending two, two tool paths. It'll speed things up. If this was hardwood, if this was something different, I would break it down into smaller files. That way I have more control if something happens, but I'm pretty confident this is gonna work. So we'll just go with this. That's it, let's go get it done. So let's talk about the bits for MDF. Uh, I see a lot of people using down cut bit, um, low float bit, compression bit in MDF. In my opinion, you're, you're wasting your money. These are cheap bits. This is a quarter inch bit that I got from Home Depot. These are double flute, straight flute bits. So there's two flutes, but they're straight. They're made for wood. And you could cut hardwood with these if you wanted to. This one here is, I can't see it. Um, but basically this is a home tool bit. This is a bit that I carry. They're cheap and I use them for this. Now, not to be mixed up, mistaken, they do have straight flute bits for acrylic and hard plastic. This straight flute bit is for wood. This is a cheap bit for wood. So I use this little guy all the time for MDF. That's all I use for MDF. There's hardly any sanding. There's a piece right there. There's a test piece that I had just cut. Um, with this eighth inch bit, no sanding. That's the way it comes off the machine. So straight flute, way to go. So just a quick little note. Uh, my first attempt failed uh, right at the very end as the head was going around and cutting the profile cut out for the tray the uh, dust collection the dust boot hit a clamp and just screwed everything screwed the pooch so I had to do it again and I actually went back in and I changed my settings I ended up running the quarter inch bit uh, full depth so whatever depth it needed to go quarter inch or 0.35 and I had it going between 120 and 150 inches a minute and really sped things up.
Okay, so here we are. This is it. Pretty happy uh, with the first attempt. I had a couple little issues, but for the most part, for this being the first try, uh, everything fits pretty well actually. I would make a couple changes. This knife, I'd probably make this a little bit deeper. Uh, this has got a round bottom. But again, it's just, it's more for it to have a home so I know where it is, so I can go get it. Um, the clamps worked out great. These holders are perfect. You know, more than enough. Uh, the only thing that I would probably change is the quarter inch holes are a little big. I'm not quite sure why. I had to make them uh, 0.252 in order for my quarter inch bit to go in uh, to do the circle. That seems to have been too big. Actually, let's measure it right now. So they're a little, yeah, they're a little big. I would go back in and change that. And it could be the speed I had it. I, uh, I did crank it up, like I said before. I went back in and changed the speed. Uh, I had the machine going at about 150 inches a minute at full depth just to speed it up. But other than that, that's probably the only thing that I would go back and change. But again, it's just holding them straight. It's just, they've got a little bit of a wobble to them. The eighth inch bits are bang on. Pretty good, pretty happy with those. So other than that, this is, uh, this is pretty much done. Get to reclaim some of my table space back. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Just takes a little time takes a little, uh, you know, little messing around to see what you want to do with, with what you have. Like I said, lay it out on the table, figure out what you want to do, and go from there. So I, uh, I'm going to do a couple more things. I am going to put this underneath my table. Probably not going to take a video of that because this is more about how to make this rather than how to build a drawer. So that's it. We're done. Any questions, let me know. All right, thanks a lot.